Welcome back viewers. On today's video, I'm gonna go over the process on how to change the oil on a Lamborghini Gallardo. Don't mind the mustache, it's No Shave November. Okay, first things first. I need to get the engine warmed up to about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, maintaining the engine RPM at 2000 RPMs for two minutes. Once I do that, I'm gonna check the level on the oil dipstick. The engine will be off at that point. Put that back in, jack the car up. Since the engine oil temperature is nice and warm, whenever I pull the drain plugs, it's gonna come out pretty quickly. And then I'll be able to uh, put new, new uh, gaskets on the plugs and then close up the oil ports. There's only two. This is a pre-LP car. This means uh, 2008 and below is pre-LP. 2009 and up is LP style Lamborghinis. So put the plugs back in and then change out the oil filter up top. I'll show you the steps here in a second. And then uh, top off the oil and then continue on from there. Let's get started. of warming up the engine is complete. I can check my dipstick level. And then jack the car up and start draining. process video out there because I have all the tools and the parts to show you. Starting off with the 8100 series Exus Gen 2. It's a Matul 5W40. All right. Uh, it's a 100% synthetic. This is five quarts right here. You're going to need 10 quarts. I got this information from Jason Bertman from Bertman Industries. He's out in Pennsylvania, easily accessible on Facebook. Uh, Jason Bertman, thank you for the tip on this. Um, this is the most highly recommended oil for the filter. I got a genuine Lamborghini filter. Um, 07 Lima 115561 Charlie. That's the filter. And then uh, it comes with an O ring already installed. And then the main uh, filter housing O ring as well, brand new one. I also have the um, crush washers and the oil filter remover wrench. So pretty lightweight, pull that right off. You're gonna need um, a number eight Allen socket with some extensions. I have a lot of extensions because I like laying on the ground and not reaching up too much. Three eighths drive, your torque wrench, and then I have extended bent tip needle nose pliers for the vacuum hoses we're gonna pull off, or I'll be pulling off. And then uh, you can use whatever needle nose pliers you feel necessary. But I have these, I spent a lot of money on these, so I'm gonna put them to use. Uh, I'm gonna see how, um, how much easier this makes it whenever I pull the vacuum hoses off to access the oil filter. Also, also, I recommend getting some cardboard. You will need cardboard on the ground whenever the oil starts pouring out, shooting out of the engine and the, uh, the oil sump. Um, it's better for the oil to splash onto the cardboard. Very quick and easy process to clean it up. And then you just get rid of the cardboard at the appropriate disposal location that is contaminated with oil. Um, I do have an extra large oil catch dish or tray you might call it to uh, 
to catch all the oil because when it comes out of the engine, it's gonna shoot off to the passenger side at a high rate, pretty much, with a little bit of pressure on it. And then a nice little easy LED shop light or garage light that I have under here so I can see very well. Use iPro when you get underneath the car so that nothing, uh, no road debris falls in your eyes. Okay, let's go. All right, eyeglasses on, safety jack installed. I'm put this one on this side because I need to get over here. So you see where the cardboard's laid out. I'm gonna slide in here, take it down in there, straight to the engine port. Right there is the engine port. That's the port to drain the engine oil, right here. I simply removed the port with my bit, just like this. Just put on your 3 8 drive and back off the uh, plug as as you would with any kind of bolt. I took my 3 8 drive off so that I could use my fingers to turn the the um the bit right here. Slowly back this slowly screwed it out so that the oil wouldn't shoot out too fast and then got it into my tray right here. So it's still going through the process. Um it was gushing out at a high rate. There was a lot of fluid coming out, actually. So don't misunderstand how much is slowly seeping out now. Um, literally, I was holding the camera and it wasn't recording anything at all. So that was my bad, but um, I'm sure you understand what oil looks like whenever it comes out at a high speed. So rolling along. All right, while the lower drain plug is draining, I'm going to prepare the vacuum hoses of removal and the oil filter housing. I'm going to remove that, replace the oil filter before moving before I move on to the pot for the uh, external oil reservoir. So with my intake out of the way, I have autopilot exotics, cold air intakes. So I just move them out of the way because uh, I'm doing something else with the intakes as well as I'm doing the oil change. But normally, you do have clear access right here in the middle of the engine. So, uh, you will be able to still access this part of the engine and still be able to do the maintenance with plenty of room to work with. When you remove a vacuum hose, you pinch the housing of the hose and you twist back and forth while you're doing a rearward uh, pulling motion. That way you can uh, break the seal, break the seat of the vacuum hoses or coolant lines, whatever, whatever you do for a hose, you, you need to rotate and wiggle to the rear. Now that the vacuum hoses are out of the way off these uh, nipples, I'm going to put um, microfiber towel in there to catch any of the oil that may come out of the oil uh, housing, oil filter housing whenever I move the oil filter housing. I feel confident that this uh, microfiber towel will catch enough of the oil upon removal. I will now take my oil filter housing removal wrench, put it on there, and go ahead and uh, reverse loosen it off.
wasn't too much pressure needed to break it loose. The rest of the way is just simple, easy, just so you know. This oil filter housing goes on snug, doesn't need to, doesn't need to be like any high amount of torque whenever you reinstall it. I'm gonna switch my hands. Since I have the oil filter housing loose enough, I'm gonna just speed it off with an easy accessible hand. And I feel it loose now. It's vertical and allowing it to rotate while I pull it out at an angle. And it looks like my filter decided to stay in there as the filter housing came out, which is fine. I have an extra rag with me to pull out the filter element, just like so. Easy. All right, the old O-ring is on the right, the new one's on the left. So you wanna make sure you do um, put oil on, on the new O-ring right before you install it so it doesn't get pinched and get split during the install of the oil filter housing. There's also an O-ring right here. You also wanna make sure that has oil on it as well so that it's a smooth installation, doesn't get binded up, all right? The air filter, the uh, oil filter does just clip in there. So clip it in there, press it in, you'll feel it pop and click in place, and then you're good to go to go and install it. At the point where it seats, sets in the housing, you wanna then install it by hand and then use your oil filter housing wrench to tighten it down to where it's good and snug. Now that is good and tight. At this point, I'm gonna use my tools to reinstall the vacuum hoses and their clamps. Once those vacuum hoses are on, um, check everything. Um, make sure that the hardware is properly secured, as well as when you start the engine, you make sure you do a leak check and make sure it's clean around the area so that if there is a leak, you can determine if it's new or if it's old and residual um, fluid or anything from whenever you had the uh, removal process done. At this point, this section is done. Obviously I need intakes on, but I'm gonna move on to the oil pot and drain that and then service the engine. Now that I have the new crush washer, I'm gonna put it on the uh, engine plug.
Get that just tightened. Pull this off and then get the torque wrench. And here we go. That's on there. Make sure you clean the plug really well so that if you have any leaks, you can easily identify and detect them. On the driver's side, lo locate the engine starter and then continue to look up directly above it. You will see your hex um, drain port right here. That's There it goes. Ta da. Now that that's drained enough, I'm going to put the plug back in with the new crush washer on it, tighten it, and then hit it with the torque wrench. Now that both uh, oil plugs are plugged back up with the new um, crush washers, it's time to top off the oil tank. And it requires six. Six quarts. So this is a five quart right here. So I'm going to fill this up and then I'm going to continue on one more quart from the other jug. Start the engine, let the engine warm up, get the oil pressurized and through all the cavities, turn the engine off and then move on to filling up the rest of the oil for the engine. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's how you do an oil change on the Lamborghini Gallardo. If you gain value from this video, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that I can keep you up to date on the next video uh, project or DIY or adventure that this channel goes on. And uh, hopefully I answer a lot of questions. Hopefully I build a lot of confidence in you as an owner or you as an, uh, someone who's seeking to be an owner and want to see what it's like to... Uh, maintain the vehicle on your own so that maybe it would help help you uh, decide whether this is the type of car that you want to be an owner of or the type of car you want to continue being an owner of so on and so forth otherwise thanks for watching stay tuned